Okay, good morning, everybody. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day, moms. So what I have to say also, um, you know, really reflects a lot of what Amy had to say. Um, and we did coordinate a little bit, so um, you'll hear a lot of the same themes. Um, but what I'm speaking to you about this morning is cultivating an attitude of worship in and through motherhood. Amy touched on perspective, um, but now I'm going to develop that a little bit further with attitude. Um, and it is terrifying to be up here in front of you. This is a little different, um, and I'm trying not to shake too much. Um, but when we were invited to do this, um, as scared as I was, I knew that it was right, and I knew that I should. Um, so I'm very happy to be up here and share with you this morning. Um, and motherhood may be about the only thing that I'm qualified to speak on, so this is good. Um, and I want to share just a little bit of the beginning of um, my entrance into motherhood. I was very young, and I was not prepared to become a mom when I did. Um, we had done everything that we could be. We had all the baby gear and all of that, and we were ready, of course. Um, but I'm going to move this back a little bit so it's in focus. Okay. Um, but uh, it started off a little rocky. I had a C-section after 13 hours of labor. That was quite unexpected. And um, then we brought our daughter home. Um, this was 18 years ago, just so you know. Um, we brought her home, and she, I couldn't feed her. And uh, it was very frustrating. I was in a lot of pain, and there were a lot of tears. And it was all just very much a shock. Um, and here's what became obvious to me real quick in the first you know, month or so of being a mom, is that I wasn't ready to be needed all the time. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I think you understand. And uh, I wasn't ready to give up control yet or to sacrifice resources, you know, money in a small budget when you're young. And uh, most of all, this is the hardest one to say, uh, is that I wasn't totally ready to give up um, completely of myself um, when I knew that I should be. And that, I think, brought on a lot of guilt when I was younger, um, as if I didn't have enough already. So I want to share with you um, three life and heart-changing things that happen as we parent. And as Amy said, like, what she shared with you, that was her testimony. And what I'm sharing with you today, this is also my testimony. Um, and what I've, I've seen uh, God do in my life over the years. Um, so we had two more babies. I have three children. They're 18, 15, and 13. So teenage moms, hey, I'm here for you. <laughs> um, but um, the first thing that, um, that we recognize um, that transforms us um, as we parent is that we recognize our own depravity and need for God as we parent. It exposes our selfish hearts and our attitude. Being a mom exposed me in ways that I could not believe or imagine. Uh, and I think it actually made me angry at times. I really wanted to look like I had it together as a young mom, and my image was very important to me. Uh, but eventually, I did have to come to terms with what was in my heart and hand it over to God. And it is still a continual process. Matthew 15, 18 says, but the words you speak come from the heart. That's what defiles you. My words were revealing what was hiding in my heart. And I began, through God, to recognize it as sin. So I've come to see that God designed parenting in such a way to be so integral in our daily lives, so nonstop, it seems, and essential, especially when they're younger, so that we can see more clearly our own strengths and weaknesses. It's a daily, hourly, and sometimes by the minute reminder of how much we clearly need him for all the things, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, and self-control. Those sound familiar, right? So thank goodness that he sent the Holy Spirit to give us what we need in him every day. In her book that I just started reading, I'm only in chapter one, but in the intro it says, um, it's be called Becoming Mom Strong by Heidi St. John. She says, Mothers are always in the process of becoming. God uses motherhood to shape and strengthen us as part of the process of becoming more like Jesus. Everything God does carries kingdom significance. 
There's no better place to experience that than in raising a family. It's so true, right? So here's our second life-transforming experience as we parent. We surrender to God that we do not have it together. You know, Amy shared that. And we invite him into our daily lives, including motherhood and how we parent. We learn to depend. So I sort of favor David in the Old Testament. And I think the reason why is because I feel like I can relate to him a little more. And David clearly loved God, but his life was messy. He was a blatant sinner, but he found his way back to God, and he poured forth beautiful, heartfelt, honest worship. He discovered what God truly desires from us, and he writes about it in Psalms. Psalm 51, 16 says, You do not desire sacrifice, or I would offer one. You do not want a burnt offering. The sacrifice you desire is a broken spirit. He will not reject a broken and repentant heart, O oh God. David has an attitude of worshiping in truth. What does that mean? Two things. First, his heart is positioned toward God, not away. He knows his need for him. Remember, repent means to turn away from sin and toward God. And second, he's worshiping in truth. It means to worship in true reality, to be real and honest about who and what we are, sinners in need of him, and who he is, the one who saves and gives freely. To keep presenting yourself as having it together and telling everyone, including God and yourself, that you're okay is not okay. He cannot work with that. Why? Matthew spells it out for us. When Jesus, who was talking about the Pharisees, who very much had it all together on the outside, Jesus says, These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teachings are but rules taught by man. Sometimes we do that, don't we? Admit openly when you feel that it's too much for you, or you're too tired, or whatever. We can only find rest. Um, in him when we're truthful to and about ourselves. This is the attitude of worship he desires, and it brings glory to him, and it's there that we can begin to worship. So here's our third life-transforming truth, and it's that God accepts us as we are, but he doesn't leave us as we are. We learn to grow. So God works in us. He parents us to become more like him, to glorify him in our daily walk with him and in, in how we parent. So not only do we benefit this, but so do our children. Amy got to share that so beautifully. There's countless, um, I'm going to call them opportunities, I think that's the nice way to say it, to teach our children life lessons. Um, and each one is also a lesson from God in how he loves us. He forgives, he shows compassion, he disciplines, he does not remove consequences, he loves sacrificially, and he gives generously. He is faithful. God is our perfect parent, making us more like him as we get to parent. It's there that we can begin to see that it is all for our benefit and for his glory. As we grow up in the Lord, our attitude shifts um, in my case, I've calmed down quite a bit uh, with my kids, and I only occasionally need to pull out the mom card, which is great. Um, and in closing, I want to touch on attitude specifically for a minute. Um, we looked at it um, in Ephesians last week, and here it is again. So here's four ways how we are able to develop a loving, sacrificial, and worshipful attitude as we parent. First is, we're able to worship him when we willingly sacrifice our time for the good of our kids. I could go on and on with examples of this. I mean, it is time intensive with uh, kids who are still at home. Second, we are able to worship him when we give up control of situations and pray to him and seek his guidance instead of our own quick answers. Man, you guys, I spend um, every Tuesday morning with women in Bible study here at the church, and I hear this every week. This, this doesn't go away. Moms have a lot that we carry. Um, 
and it's it's we it's close to our hearts. This is we have a lot of concerns. <laughs> Third, we're able to worship him when we give of our resources to provide for our children's wants and needs, and that can be difficult, um, but it's very important. And last, we're able to worship him when we give of ourselves sacrificially, especially when it goes against what our hearts are wandering towards. Motherhood as an act of worship positions us to develop an attitude of less of me, more of him. We can better recognize our limits and hand over to him who we are and who he's having us become. So Ephesians 5, 1 through 2, we read this last week, but... Uh, We're going to look at it again. It says, Be imitators of God, therefore, as dearly loved children, and live a life of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Aren't you glad that we have Jesus, who is able to live perfectly on our behalf and provides the example that we need for living every day? Um, I love that because... He was loving first. It made a way for us to love on others. We will fail as parents sometimes. Um, Man, even our best will still fall short, but we can look at our failed opportunities as how much we need to be dependent on him. Always. And help us ultimately see our greatest need to be rescued by him, which, you know, Amy touched on. So Pastor Dan's going to come up, and he's going to um, get ready um, to close us up before we pray. But I want to share with you where I am now in motherhood, 18 years after having uh, my first child. Um, I'm so thankful for every long day and short year that's grown me and my kids up. Um, and I give God all the praise and glory for what he's done in me and my kids, and it's been quite the journey. Um, now my daughter, she's, um, she's a senior. She's getting ready to graduate. She's going to go off on her own in the fall. Um, and it's, it's, it's starting to throw me. Um, I know it's coming, but um, I'm not ready for it. And it's going to be one of my biggest challenges and um, hopefully opportunities um, to grow. But I know that God is still faithful to meet us where we are when we come to him. I've learned this over and over and over again. Um, And he's never done with us. And I'm prayerful and I'm hopeful for what new things he has in store for the next season to come. Thank you, guys. Terrific.